Yes. Okay, now the next one. The next one is which of these statements is true? An earth insulator is always live, an earth conductor cannot become live, an earth conductor is always live. I I put an earth conductor cannot become live. Okay. Okay, now the next one. So the next one is um what does Q stand for? It can it, it stands for charge in columns. Right? <laughs> Q stands for right? Charge into columns. Like its unit is being asked, right? Pardon? I, I can't hear you. You're breaking up slightly. Okay. Is it clear now? Yeah. Okay. So what's in the question? It's being asked like to tell you the unit of charge, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Now. Okay, now the next. So, one. Okay. how much how much energy is transferred in ten seconds with a current of thirteen amperes? And a potential difference of 230 volts. Okay. So, what's the formula that you'll use? So, um, the f uh, formula was, um, wasn't it like, um, E equals I over T? Uh, like, you have to calculate the first thing is it was like the current of 10 ampere flows through 230 volt lamp what is the resistance that's the question right what's the question yeah. so you have to calculate the resistance so the equation should contain the resistance a volt that is the potential difference and <coughs> the current what's the thing that connects all these three voltage current and resistance What's the equation? Um, but what? I, you just repeat the question. Yeah. So repeat the question. What's the question? So the question is, um, how much energy is transferred in 10 seconds with a current of 13 amperes and a potential difference of 230 volts? Okay, so it's energy you have to calculate and you know the potential difference. Yeah. Um, it's power that's given. So you have to tell me the formula that connects all these three. Okay. So tell me what's the formula. Of what? Energy. So energy. Yes. It's e, o, e, e equals T over I. No, I over T. Sorry, sorry. So energy is joules equals V multiplied by Q. Yes, energy is equal to V multiplied by Q. Um, could you remind me what I is? I is current. I is current. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, could could you just recap to me, um, like what each letter uh, we've learned so far is? Okay. So, like V is potential difference. So V is potential. V difference. is potential difference. Okay. Yes. Now, I is current. 
I is current. R is resistance. R is resistance. Then Q equals charge. Q. Yes. The Q is charge. P is part. Uh, C. C is its unit actually. C is the unit of P. charge. Like this one is P. P is power. And if you say C. Uh, so C basically is the unit of charge that is coulomb. So C C is the unit of charge which is coulombs. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and yes, yes. And uh, I mean, like any more symbols left? Like it's E. That's energy, and like that's all we have completed so far. So E is energy, and that's it. Yes. Then we come on to the units. That means the potential difference as units of volts. Its unit is in volts. So we write it V also, like it's V. Then current is in amperes or amps. Oh wait, wait, hey, I was just, I was just um enlarging the letters so that I can. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, what were you saying? So, uh, I was telling you the units. So, units of potential okay. difference is volts. So, unit. Um, sorry. Unit of potential difference is volts. Yes. So difference. Okay. Yeah. Then unit of current is amperes. <laughs> current is amperes. Okay. Then unit of resistance is ohms. Resistance is ohms. Yes. Okay. Then it's coulombs. The unit of charge is coulomb. Unit of charge is coulombs. Charge. Coulombs. Okay. And then unit of power is what? Unit of power. Yes. Is what? Watts. Watts. Okay. What? Is that it? And then it's energy that is in joules. And joules. Okay. okay, so that's it. Okay, so okay, good. coming back to the question. So it was question like where we have to calculate the total energy. Now use this equation and also we should know that that V is equals to IR, the formulas that are very important. So first formula is that it's I is equals to Q over, this is small t is what? 
it's time that's the first formula okay. second formula is the ohm's law that is v is equals to ri formula is of energy that is energy is equals to V times okay. V and for this to calculate power so P is equals to V multiplied by R so these are the four formulas Oh, so uh, E equals V over Q. Q equals Q. Um, V equals R I V equals R I and V equals I equals Q over T Okay, so Q over T. T equals I. T. Okay, yeah, I okay. finished writing them down. Now, moving back, like, again, you were reading a question. So try to solve the question using all these formulas. So like it was the energy that you had to calculate in some time seconds, right? The homework that I've given you. Like the question that you were reading that I'm saying. Try to solve that one. Okay. So read that question one more time. What was the question? It was calculate the energy and it was... Oh. You were reading like right before this. The question of homework. Okay, yeah. So read that one. So the question was, how much e energy is transferred when the potential difference is 230 volts and the charge is 5 coulombs? Yes. So use this formula. First select which formula will you use and then calculate this one. So how much energy is transferred when the potential difference is energy transferred?
So, Thirty. So, forty-six is the answer. Forty-six. Um, what is it? Uh, two. Okay. So you have done. Uh, which formula have you used? E equals V Q. Yes, that's correct. So voltage is given, charge is given, you just have to multiply them together, right? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, read out the next question. Okay, so the next question is um, How much energy is transferred in 10 seconds of the current of 13 amperes and a potential difference of 230 volts? Yes, no, okay. What will you do? First, tell me okay, so yes, yes. First, tell me which formula will you use? Um, E equals V Q. Yes, that's correct. And then, so I would times two hundred and thirty volts by thirteen. But like. Uh, charge is not directly given to you, right? Oh, so E equals VQ over I. Yes. So E is equals to, yes, E is equals to V times I into T. That you have to do. Why? Because Q equals I times T. The question is in terms of current and time. You don't have charge. So first calculate the charge from this. And then put the value here. Is this clear? Or, yeah. Or is there any doubt? Um, yeah, it's clear. So first, like you tell me what are the data, what is the data given? What is time given? T is equals to? T is what I'm asking was T given to. Like, can you tell me the data? What is the data given to you? And the question. Hello. Um, hello. Yes. So, what's the data given to you in this question? So, we have um so the data is the so you know the uh, we can replace the i with 13 um we can replace e with 10 yes and then replace um the v yes. with um um th uh, 230. yes so so we need to find the uh the the what do you call it uh the current which is uh q the charge no no just read the question first i think you're just you're confused just read the question completely how much energy is transferred in 10 seconds yes in with 10 a, seconds. so 
time is equals to 10 seconds clear now next um with the current of 13 amperes <coughs> so i is equals to given as 13 amperes right yeah how yes. next and a potential difference of 230 volts so v is equals to the v is 230 volts and what you have to do you just have to calculate the energy right yeah so energy is equals to v times q so very first thing is calculate the q so give me the value of q here from here Uh, v. Oh, Q. 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 Um, 13. So, Q is, you have calculated to be 13, right? It's 130. How it's 13? It's, it's 130, right? See the formula. Wow. This, this formula. I is equals to Q over T. Then Q is equals to what? If I equals Q over T, then Q is equals to what? Oh, I equals Q over T. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, so I is. Okay, so I was using the wrong formula. Okay. I is current. And we know that the current is 13. Yes. And we know that the potential difference is 230 volts so we we can we can replace that with um um with but q is charge and v is potential difference yes so um so okay see i'm writing i is equals to q over t right this formula now if you want to calculate q you have to make q the subject and how can you do by cross multiplying so q is equals to i times t is this clear yeah now in our question, I is given as 13, time is given as 10, so charge is what? 130 coulombs. Is this clear? Yeah. Now you have calculated charge as 130 and voltage is 230. Just multiply them together, you get energy. Is this clear? So energy is finally is equals to 230 multiplied by 130 now you tell me is there any doubt in this question if you have asked me yeah is it clear or do you have any doubt yeah clear it's clear okay. yeah now read out the next question So the next question is, um, which of these is not correct equation? Which is which of these is not the correct equation to calculate the total cost of electricity? Okay. So what are the options? Yeah. So. The answer is so that the options are power times time times time times cost per unit. Okay. And the other one is number of units times cost per unit and number of units divided by cost per unit. Okay. So actually we haven't completed this one. Like I'll tell you but one we reach to that then i'll tell you it's better because we haven't completed as of now the cost of like per unit and electricity and power we haven't completed this portion as of now so i've told you that leave this these part that we haven't completed okay okay so leave that 
Now move on to the next one. Uh, um, the next few ones are the uh, quite um, um, hard ones. The, the ones that we haven't covered yet. Okay. So, <laughs> so let me give you some questions that we have completed, okay? So first, it's to calculate the resistance. I think we uh, were on series and parallel circuits. Yeah. I have cleared you what a series and parallel circuit. So you tell me, what's the difference between the series and parallel circuit? So, um, a series, a series circuit is when the, um, the circuit is just straight. It's just, um, it, it's when like, uh, there's, there's like a, a few components to make the circuit work. It's just straight. If you add like another path, the electricity always takes a shortcut so it will always be in like one um <laughs> no no like in series i have told you the most important thing is that the current remains the same throughout every component or throughout the circuit this remains the same if you remember okay that means, suppose this is my circuit And suppose this is first lamp, this is second lamp. So if the total current of this circuit is 10 amps, then the current across this component will be 10 amps, and across this is also 10 amps. So clearly you can see that the current remains same throughout the circuit and also through every component. So this remains the same. That's 10 amps. Okay. So this is for a series circuit. This is how you can distinguish a circuit, a series circuit. That means current remains the same. Whereas for parallel circuit, it's the potential drop that remains the same. So suppose this is my circuit. This is first lamp. This is second lamp. So if the total potential of this circuit is say 12 volts, then the potential drop on this component will be 12 volts and on this also 10 volts so clearly you can see that potential difference remains the same here in parallel circuit is this clear that's a basic definition so in a circuit if the current remains the same throughout the circuit as well as or uh, throughout or across every component then the circuit is known as series circuit and if the potential difference remains the same across every component and throughout the circuit then such circuits are known as parallel circuit is this clear? yeah now you define yeah. what is series circuit and what's a parallel circuit so uh, a series circuit is uh when like all components are connected end to end and forming a single path like for the flow and uh, in and and that's the city circuit and what's parallel circuit and parallel circuit all components all the components yeah are connected across each other forming like exactly two sets of electrical common points and like you said the potential difference is the same throughout the different um um different like thing across every component okay every yeah of course so. yes that's correct so like uh, the one that you're describing like it it remains in series and it forms like it describes its circuit it's like structure of circuit right and but in, yeah. but in definition wise like if you want to know that proper definition so this one is that if current remains same in series and it's parallel so both the definition you can choose if this one's appropriate you can choose it like or you can combine both okay yeah okay
now resistance if you want to calculate the equivalent resistance so first you define me what do you mean by resistance so um so resistance So what is resistance? So resistance is the opposite, opposite like the sort of the opposition that uh, like something offers to the flow of electric current, and it is represented by the upper, uh, and it is like, um, and when the when the applied voltage is held constant, the current in a direct current electrical circuit is inversely um, proportional to the resistance okay so you can say that basically resistance is a property of material which obstruct the flow of current okay this is resistance and this its unit is ohms yeah and according to the ohms law Resistance is equals to V over I. Why? Because Ohm's law is what? V equals R I. Clear? <laughs> is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Now you tell me. First tell me what do you mean by voltmeter? voltmeter so it's an instrument that measures the voltage of electricity yes uh, yes that's correct now you tell me a voltmeter should be connected in parallel or in series connections in parallel or series yes. um, i think series because um it needs to measure or just the single flow of electricity get, to get accurate results. If it's in a parallel circuit, it will get different results and your results won't be as accurate as, as compared to the series circuit. Okay. Now, first tell me, voltage is for potential difference, right? Suppose I want to calculate the potential difference of this component, okay? And suppose I have connected the voltmeter here. So definitely I want that, <coughs> sorry, so I want the complete 12 volts, right? I don't want any missing voltage. So you tell me in which circuit the voltage remains same, in series or in parallel? See, this is my component and I want to go know what's the potential drop across this component okay now i have connected voltmeter in series circuit with it and in second case i have connected voltmeter in parallel circuit this is component and this is my voltmeter Now you know that in parallel circuit, the potential drop remains the same. Remains the same, which means if 12 volts is the potential drop across this lamp, then definitely 12 volts will be the potential drop across the voltmeters. Okay. And also I know that in series circuit, it's the only current that remains the same. Potential drop doesn't remain the same. So maybe if the potential drop is 12 volts across this, then maybe it's... 7 volts or 8 volts across this. Now you tell me which one is preferable, a series or a parallel? Um, series. Why? This one is series. Oh. And this mm. one is parallel. Okay, so there is think... Okay, for one question. There is a weighing machine, okay? There are two weighing machines. You stand on this first machine, you stand on this second machine. Actually, say your weight is 30 kg. 
This machine is measuring 30 kg, whereas this machine is measuring 15 kg. You tell me which one is the better one or accurate one. For what? For measuring your weight. The one that's 30 kgs. Yes, because it's measuring your correct weight. Clear? Definitely. You're 30 and it's giving you 30. That means it's a it's the best measuring or weighing machine because it's measuring your correct weight. But this one is not like that's a useless one. Now see that if you want to calculate the potential drop across this component and if it's 12 volts, so definitely you want the reading of voltmeter to be 12 volts, right? Just like your weight. If it's 30 kg, you want the weighing machine to say 30 kg. If it's 12 volts, so definitely the reading should be 12 volts across the voltmeter. But in series, it's giving me lesser than the 12 volts or sometimes more than the 12 volts. So is this one accurate or this one which is giving me the exit value? Tell me. Um, the one that's the parallel because it's more accurate. Yeah, because the potential drop remains the same in every component. Is this clear? That means if potential drop across this lamp is 12 volts, then definitely this voltmeter will also read the 12 volts. Point clear? Yeah. But in series circuit, if the potential drop across this lamp is 12 volts, it's not necessary that voltmeter will read 12 volts. It can read lesser than, more than, or maybe equal, but it's not uh, like certain. Okay? Because potential drop doesn't remain same throughout every component or across every component. So in series, it's not preferable. Is this clear why series is not preferable? Yeah. So you tell me. Give me the reason. Yeah. Why a voltmeter should be connected in parallel circuit? Um, um, Because, um, because, because the objects, the like, um, components in the parallel circuit will experience the same potential difference, like you said. Um, so an, a voltmeter, um, and the voltmeter will want accurate readings and you should connect it to the parallel circuit. Okay, somehow you're correct. Now it's M meter, so M meter should be connected in series or parallel circuit. First, tell me what's M meter. Um, so, uh, so it's a it's an instrument for measuring electric current in amperes. Yeah, that's correct. Now you tell me ampere. Ammeter should be connected in series or parallel. Tell me. Uh, series. Okay, and why? Because it has low internal resistance and the current to be measured in the circuit, circuit should not be practiced affected by the um, ammeter so it has to have a low internal resistance yeah okay you're describing the structure of ammeter like it has low resistance but I'm asking that ammeter should be connected in series circuit or parallel circuit and if you say that it should be connected in series circuit why it should be connected in series circuit Because the the series connection, the same current flows through all the comp components, and ammeter aims at the measuring current flowing through the circuit, and that's why it's connected in series. 
Yes. So that the same current that is there in the current flows through it and gets measured. Yes, that's correct. That's the reason. That's very correct. Okay. So now let me see. I'm giving you one question. And this question is a 3 amps or 3 amperes of current flows through a 240 volts lamp. What is the resistance of them? Um. So, what is the resistance? Okay, so um uh, so V equals R I yeah. and so a is amperes, right? Um, yes. Current I. Current is I. Current is I. So would it be eighty? Yeah, that's right. I know. What's the unit? 80 ohms. Yeah, that's correct. Now, according to the current or the electricity that is flowing through a particular material, they are categorized as conductor and insulator. So, the very starting I've told you, it's a separate reason. So, you tell me what's a conductor and what's insulator. So, um... A conductor of a circuit. Like a simple definition of a conductor and an insulator. Yes, according to the electricity. So how can you describe a conductor or an insulator? So a conductor so is, the, is where electric current can flow free freely yes and in an insulator it cannot yes that's correct and give me some example of conductor and insulators so conductor would be um most metals and insulator would be plastic and rubber and wood yes Now some theoretical part actually we're doing. So that is the uses and dangers of aesthetic electricity. Okay. So basically electricity are of two types. The first is the static and the dynamic. Okay, now you tell me what do you mean by static electricity? Static electricity So um Okay, let me tell you. So, actually, objects can be positively charged, negatively charged, Wait, or neutral. Okay. Okay. I, I was I was gonna tell I was gonna tell you what static electricity is. Okay. Okay. So continue. So, um, 
So it's like a stationary electric charge, and it's quickly produced by friction. Yes, that's so it. So causes uh, sparks, um, and and the attraction of uh, small fine um, dusts or hairs. Yes. So. Like take the example when a plastic rod is covered, like if there's a plastic rod, this is a plastic rod. And this is a duster. And if you just like rub each other, that is the friction, if it's a friction between the rod and the duster, so that results basically in the transfer of electrons. So this is, I can say, a, a negatively charged one. And your duster is positively charged. So what happens is when you rub them together, so friction is created and this friction between rod and duster results in transfer of electrons. So the positively charged rod can be used to pick up the small pieces of paper or like to bend the flow of a stream of water. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't also like when you get the back of a rubber yeah. and you and you rub it in your hair, doesn't that make friction? Yeah, that yes, definitely. When you rub it creates the friction and because of that friction the charges uh, gets transferred from one point to another point. That happens. Okay. Like exchange of charges takes place. Okay. So this is what the static electricity, okay? Yeah. Okay. Now you tell me what could be the dangers of a static electricity? Um, if it gets powered up, yeah. um, isn't it, isn't lightning another form of static electricity? Yes, definitely. So, yeah, so, um, yeah. lightning, so it that that is like a very um high powered version of static electricity and that is very dangerous and could cause death yeah so the static electricity if it builds in clouds it can cause a huge spark so i can say if it forms in cloud it can cause a huge spark yeah between the ground between the cloud and the ground and this causes the lightning that is a flow of charge through the atmosphere so this okay, one is yeah. very dangerous and some another example of a static electricity is when like if there is a flammable gas then even a small spark could ignite the gases and it can cause explosion like generally, if you're using, uh, it's a natural gas you're using, like it is for cooking. Okay, if you're using and it's there's a leakage, and if you use a lighter, then it can cause an explode, explosion. It can cause an explosion. Why? Because that single spark gives rise, like it gives rise because it's an flammable gas. Flammable gas, which means it can easily get ignited and if there is a very small spark it can ignite that gas and results in explosion it gives rise to the chain reaction and give rise to the explosion is this clear um i have um questions okay uh so one is when you put like say a toaster and you've got it plugged in and you put it in water doesn't does that make static electricity uh no that's not static electricity that's a flowing electricity that's a dynamic electricity okay um oh what was it um um i forgot Okay, so like if you remember, you can note down like whatever your questions are if you have in mind like when you are studying and if you have any doubts, you keep on writing them, okay, and you can ask those questions in class.
Okay. Okay, now we were discussing the dangers of static electricity. So that's basically so like it the static electricity can result in the huge shocks or huge spark like in clouds it can cause a huge spark a lightning between the land and the clouds and in if there's a flammable gas so even a small spark results in a big explosion so these are some examples of static electricity or dangers of static electricity okay okay or you can say like when you touch something that has a large electric charge so that charge will flow through your body and causes an electric shock so this causes the burn or even stop your heart okay so when it flows through your body it's the static electricity it's a shock because of the static electricity okay so when it's when basically current is not flowing through any conductor when charge is not flowing through a conductor okay then you can say that this is a dynamic electricity and if there are charge accumulated on any uh, like you can say on any appliances and you touch that then it's a static electricity okay so like if you had yeah. a question so for a toaster if toaster is turned off okay then it's a static one then and if it's turned on then it's a dynamic is this clear yeah okay so these are some dangers of static electricity and uses of static electricity now do you know some uses of like static electricity um um let me think. Uh, oh yeah, um, Xerox machines. Yes, that's right. So, <laughs> so basically, then like yes, yes. Um, you know, in uh, the the Xerox machines, they they um they have that green scanner. Yeah. Is that the um? static electricity or is it something else i might be completely wrong okay so basically i'm explaining you the process so it's the first thing is suppose this is your machine okay and this is a document that is placed on it now the image of this document is projected on the positively charged plate so this green plate that you're saying like not blue, like this plate just over which is its plate it's a positively charged copying plate now when the light falls on this plate the electrical charge gets away it gets leaked away okay now negatively charged black toner particles are attracted to this these remaining layers so what happens is this is a positively charged plate when light falls like from the below when light falls on this plate the positively charged electrons or sorry positively charged gets away from this part okay and there is empty space here here is empty space here is empty space and in that empty space the negatively charged particles are attracted okay clear like where are the positive remaining areas there are the negatively charged attracted and the paper is placed over the copying plate and then the toner is basically transferred to the paper and heated to make it stick yeah is it clear or like is there any doubt so okay so in short i can say there are two parts one is the toner and one is the plate okay in simple if i have to say this is the toner component of a photocopying machine and second is a plate
This okay. is negatively charged. This is positive. Okay. Charged. Okay. And you know that opposite charges attract each other, right? So in very simple words, yeah. you have to learn that this is a plate. When light falls on this plate, the negative charge gets attracted to the positive charge. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Now this negatively charged particles after attracted towards these positive areas, then it's the paper that is placed over these copying plate. And this toner that is this negatively charged then transferred to the paper and heat it and make it to stick. Okay. And thus the photocopy is taken off the copy plate. Is this clear? Like in a very simple word, and there, there is a lot, it's a very long procedure, it's a very detailed one. But in short, if I have to define you, so I can say that basically it has two components, a toner and a plate. Toner is negatively charged and plate is positively charged. When light falls on plate, then toner, like the negatively charged particles from the toner get attracted towards the plate, make it to heat and make the paper to stick on it. And because of that, all the material, whatever, like if you want to co copy down, that gets printed on that blank paper because of that heat and the transfer of electrons. This is clear in very simple words, if you have to say. Is it clear or is there any doubt? What? No. That's not clear. So like in a very simple word, how can I clear you? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. First, you tell me: Is these two things clear? Yeah. Okay. So simple. You can say a photocopier works on the principle of electricity, and you can say photoconductivity. Uh, photoconductivity is a very hard word. Works on electricity. This is clear. Yeah. Okay. Now it has two components, a toner and a plate. This one clear? Um, so can I just um, say to you I understood? Okay, so it's okay. Just tell me. Okay, so you said that on the plate. Yes. The plate and then there's, the plate is negatively charged? Positively. Oh, sorry, positively. And then when the scanner like reflects on it, it um the positive charges um ad get attracted to negative charges and they create like sparks. So is that correct? Yes. So basically you can say an image of the page is projected on positively charged plate. Okay? So simple yeah it, it's what happened is it's a toner which is negatively charged plate is positively charged after the light gets uh, projected on the plate the negative charged particles from the toner gets attracted to the plate makes it heated and thus it makes the plate to stick on positively charged plate and because of that the whatever that on the paper is copied down to the blank paper okay that's the most simplest version that I can clear you okay yeah okay so this is basically how it works and in the next class we'll complete the rest of the questions and I also will forward you the PDF where you have to do the questions okay related to whatever we have completed in all three or four lectures okay 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 then thank you bye. thank you bye you are currently the only person in this conference.